Hey yo, I'm Colby from Sanitarium Productions. We're back again with another G.I. Joe action figure toy review. Today we're looking at the 50th anniversary release of the Mission Accepted 2-pack featuring Duke and Tombstone. Pretty cool looking set here. Um, I'm not really sure why we get another Duke in this wave, but we did. So it's fine. We'll deal with it. Um, regardless of that, we do get a new character, Tombstone. It looks pretty cool from the packaging anyways. Flipping it over to the back, we get just the uh, general 50th anniversary release. A couple of the uh, character arts on the back, and that's pretty much it. Pretty standard stuff from what we've seen so far. Nothing special, but anyways, let's go ahead and open this thing up and take a look at the figures themselves. The only really bad part about these uh, 50th anniversary releases is the fact that they are still not very widespread released. Um, pretty much the only place you can get them at is Toys R Us and uh, yeah that's pretty much it. Some secondary online retailer stores carry them as well but for the most part you can only get them at Toys R Us. So. For some people it's probably not a problem but uh, the nearest one to me is about 50 miles away. And you can never tell if they're going to have any stock or not, so, you know. I do miss the uh, regular retail releases of these things, but what you going to do? Anyways, we got the thing open. This is the card back. We'll just uh, toss that into the trash for now. Uh, we've got the file cards here. They are taped together as normal. We'll just open them up real quick and take a look at them. Pretty much the standard for the 50th anniversary is to have two per character uh, with front and back in different languages. So you get uh, four different languages of each character. So yeah, still pretty cool. They're pretty nice file cards. Not quite as cool as the uh, original ones we used to get, but... It is nice that they come in kind of card format, so... Anyways, there those are. We'll stick them to the side. And let's pull out all these guys and their accessories. Not as many weapons in this one as uh, some of the other ones, but... You still get a, quite a bit. And I'll try to keep them separated here as best I can. To keep them with the right characters. And there we go. Pretty cool. We'll uh, go ahead and zoom in on these things now and uh, take a closer look at them. But uh, here's what you get in the entire set. So, yeah, let's zoom in. First up, we have Tombstone. This is a new character here. And let's just uh, take a quick look at the uh, file card while we're at it here. Uh, so it says, Tombstone is a mysterious, high-ranking member of the Cobra organization. He strikes fear in his enemies through a combination of strong tactical leadership and cunning psychological manipulation. His battlefield brilliance engenders deep loyalty among Cobra troopers. When he faces Conrad Duke Hauser in battle, he meets his equal in leadership and skill and finds a warrior who does not succumb easily to mind tricks and phantom terrors. So, doesn't tell us a whole lot about the character. You can use your imagination though, which is awesome. Let's go ahead and look at the accessories first. We do have the traditional figure stand here. Traditional Cobra logo on the top. Codename on the side. 
other than that it's uh, pretty much the same as we've got since the 25th anniversary so nice we have a regular assault rifle here uh, one that we've seen in previous figure releases it's a really nice gun uh, again I don't know the specific names and models or anything like that so if anybody out there listening does feel free to drop a comment down below it does have some nice detail work we've got uh, some kind of railgun looking thing again some nice detail work on it kind of an odd looking weapon but uh, cool anyways then we have this dude did here that I have absolutely no idea what it is some kind of uh, laser beam thing so uh, since this guy is some kind of psyops command person guy maybe it's some kind of um, mind altering ray gun thing it looks really cool regardless uh, it's a little odd that they have this uh, opening in the bottom here I guess to save plastic and to cut back on costs still kinda cool looking though nice kinda futuristic weapon and then we got this crazy thing here which uh, to me looks like it may be some kind of a uh, gas emitting kind of flamethrower type thing so yeah you can do with that what you will it is kinda cool looking though like almost something like from the Ghostbusters but uh, who knows let's go ahead and take a look at the figure while we're at it uh, the actual body here looks very similar to uh, some of the other sculpts we've had in the past uh, the elite horseman kind of come to mind along with some of the cyber ninja things and those guys but uh, still a pretty cool looking sculpt here anyways on the the head sculpt it's a uh, really cool looking actually he's got this really cool scar going across his eye here so it does look kinda cool um, the only thing I will say is I think the head may be just a little bit too big for the body but not too bad anyways again a lot of really cool detail work on the uh, flak vest and on the armor that he's got all the way around very cool looking anyways nice cobra symbol on the top he's got a pair of uh, smoke grenades or gas canisters or something there articulation wise the head spins 360 degrees has pretty good up and down motion as well traditional ball and swivel at the shoulder joint ball and swivel at the elbow joint uh, ball and tilt thing at the wrist so you get that extra articulation there at the wrist um, standard ab crunch feature going on the uh, flak vest limits it a little bit but not as much as I thought it was going to so you still get quite a big bit of range of motion there and uh, side to side is really good on that standard t-hook at the waist double knee joint and the uh, swivel and rocker at the ankle so all the traditional points of articulation we're used to in this line all in all very nice looking and it's cool to have another bad guy that uh, has some uh, menace to him as opposed to the traditional ground troops uh, so as far as weapons go everything looks like it fits in his hands pretty easily you can do all sorts of cool stuff with this guy there are not really any way for him to hold them other than in his hands he does have a couple of clip points on his uh, flak vest but nothing on the actual weapons themselves to uh, be able to attach them to so it doesn't really mean anything I guess at this point so you can get uh, two weapons in his hands and 
and everything else will pretty much have to uh, just be carried auxiliary style. But still, overall, it's uh, pretty nice. The color scheme works pretty well. I do like the kind of uh, sky blue kind of color mixed with the gray and black. And uh, I don't really know why they put the white on his shoulders, but uh, they did, so whatever. <laughs> it looks okay. Anyways, that's a uh, tombstone there for kind of cool. Next up we have the Duke figure. Again, he comes with the traditional figure stand here, the G.I. Joe logo on the top, code name on the front. Regular 25th anniversary release uh, figure stand though, so nothing special there. Now let's look at his file card real quick. See if y'all can read this here. Um, it says, Fluent in several languages, Duke graduated at the top of his class at Airborne School, Fort Benning. Calm and determined, he commands by winning respect. He turned down a battlefield commission because it would distance him from his troops and keep him from the center of the action. When he faces Cobra leader Tombstone, he meets a foe who is equal in rank and combat skill, and a psyops warrior without equal in the art of terrifying enemies into surrender. It is nice that they are incorporating the... Uh, the two pack kind of thing into the file cards giving you a little bit uh, more background on why the two were paired together though they don't really say much about why it's actually happening it's uh, nice that they do reference things in there moving on we'll look at the weapons first we've got kind of a standard uh, M16 kind of assault rifle here some nice detail on it Pretty cool looking weapon there. We've got a traditional pistol here. Oop. Again, pretty nice detail work on it. If you can see that close, I don't know how well it picks up, but uh, still pretty cool pistol. And we've got this uh, slightly larger submachine gun looking thing here. Again, some nice detail work going on on it. And it has the added bonus here of uh, having the extra clip on the side. And that clip is removable. You just uh, kind of pop it in and out there however you want. And it works really well. So, Still pretty cool. Backpack wise, he just has a kind of regular backpack here with a, a green spot on it. Um... It's got a place in here for a couple of other accessories to come with. Um, mostly when they were packed with other characters previously in the uh, earlier lines. Uh, so in this particular case, none of these weapons really fit in it. Uh, you can kind of get like it to do something like this and he can hold it that way. So that's a kind of nice little feature, but... Uh, doesn't quite work as well with these uh, weapons as some of the other ones, but still it's nice to have as an option there. Uh, and you can take this larger weapon and uh, kind of stick it into the side there if you want like that. Which is a nice little, little thing. Um, kind of unintentional, but there it is. Moving on to the figure itself. Uh, this one's got me a little perplexed. I really don't know why they chose this particular color scheme for this guy. Um, it It's a nice figure sculpt. It looks really nice, but uh, it just doesn't really seem to me to be a real reason behind a Duke figure. Um, the only thing I can come up with is it's kind of an updated look of his classic cartoon style. Um, the color scheme, anyways, works pretty well for that theory. But other than that, it looks more like an airtight figure than it does Duke. So, I don't know. Again, though, nice sculpting work on the flak jacket. Lots of little details here, there, and the bounce on it. And it does look pretty nice. 
just a, an odd choice for Duke, I guess. But anyways, articulation-wise, the head does spin 360 degrees, up and down rotation as well. Uh, looking at the actual sculpt itself, it does still have that weird scar on his face uh, that seems to be a carry forward from the uh, movie line. I got a little bit of paint slop on uh, the corner of his eye here, but uh, other than that, it's not bad. It works pretty well for Duke. Got a traditional ball and swivel at the shoulder joint, traditional ball and swivel at the elbow joint, and um, swivel and rocker at the wrist as well. So that's still nice to have that extra articulation everywhere. Traditional ab crunch feature going on. The flak jacket limits things a little bit, but not too awful much. Traditional T-hook at the waist. Uh, double knee joint standard. And he's got these weird ankle boot things that uh, they do slide from side to side, that weird rocker motion. Um, but up and down movement is kind of limited, but you can go to side to side for all of that, and it uh, spins kind of weirdly, but uh, I think that's just because of the way they did the pants on these guys. It's those weird boot cover things. But all in all, still a cool looking figure. It does have the G.I. Joe symbol on the side here that... Uh, Kind of hard to make out that gold against the kind of mustard yellow doesn't really work as well as one might think. It's subtle, but it's there, so. Yeah. Uh, the only real problem I see is that the, with the flak jacket here, it has a tendency to come unbuckled and won't really buckle back or stay buckled back too easily. It's uh, that weird soft plastic stuff, so it just kind of has a tendency to get loose and slip off but that's kind of been a recurring problem with most of these figures from the 25th and up when they started doing this weird flag jacket kind of thing that problem kind of has persisted but still not a big deal gearing him up the backpack fits on his back very easily he's got room for two weapons so you can uh, take the big weapon and the pistol and you can hold them very easily no problems if I can get it to go in his hand there there we go and then like I said before you can kind of slide this uh, other weapon into the back here and it kind of latches in place like that. So uh, this guy can actually carry all of his weapons. Um, unfortunately, he does not have like a side holster for his pistol or anything like that. But uh, he at least can carry all of his weapons at one time. So that's a, a bonus there. So yeah, not a bad figure. Just uh, again, kind of an odd choice for Duke. But eh, no big complaints here. And here we have the two figures side by side again. Um, overall, it's a passable set. Uh, there's nothing really exciting going on, unfortunately. So you wouldn't be missing much if you passed on this particular set. Uh, I do like the new Tombstone character. He's got some cool weapons. Uh, the Duke figure is a, a decent enough Duke. Um, but doesn't really bring a whole lot new to the table so yeah just kind of feel ho-hum about this set to be honest with you right now it's not bad at all but it doesn't you know stand out really in my head here so you know it is what it is so no big worry there
that's all the time we've got for today, so thanks for watching. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to our channel. Drop us some comments down below. Let us know what you think about this particular set. Also, if you have any special requests you'd like to see in the future, feel free to leave them down below as well. Until next time, yo Joe.